Welcome to The Daily Wrap-Up, a concise show dedicated to bringing you the most relevant independent news as we see it from the last 24 hours. Friday, May 22nd, 2020. Thank you for joining me today. Got a pretty focused show for you today. A really interesting, something actually that somebody shared with me a while back that he followed up with and actually confirmed today, which we'll get to in a moment, that is really, really interesting, that really fits in together with everything that we've already been talking about and things that have been going on long before we got to where we are now, which should make you question whether or not what we're being told about what's going on now is actually what's happening. And we're gonna talk, I'm gonna start today by kind of painting you a picture of specifically in this case, I guess it would be revolving around Moderna because that seems to be leading the charge in the, the vaccine discussion. But I want to paint you a picture for what the, the the people surrounding this company and how the infiltration of the administration and all the people surrounding it and on all sides and everywhere, as, but how that pertains to every single one of these companies that we're dealing with today. But Moderna right now seems to be the most interesting as it pertains to today and the, the crazy overlap between the people, not just financially invested, but just invested in ways that would blow your mind. Ways that it, the kind of things that are malicious, nefarious, like the next level discussions that people would say that can't be true, but you end up finding out that they tend to be. But I'll, I'll, I also want to point out right before I begin, there seems to be a little bit of a a little bit of lag today with YouTube, so I hope there's no connectivity issues. But just a heads up, as always, for those that may be just discovering this channel right now, we are broadcasting on about five, maybe I think seven different platforms right now. So. If you're ever tired with this platform or tired of the lag or tired with the censorship or tired with the suppression and all the crazy things they do to keep the truth from you, we're on DLive and we're on Rockfin and we're on Brighteon and we're on all kinds of different things. So right this moment, find one of those if you're unhappy with where you are. But if there are any lag issues today, make sure you find us still because the stream will continue even if YouTube decides to try to stop it. Now, I want to start today with a focus on Moderna in regard to what the company is before we get into the ties around it all. And really today it gets into some pretty creepy stuff towards the end. So I hope you guys will stay tuned about the the horrible things we're going to go over today, which will blow your mind good that it happened before all this started. And then to show you really clearly why that should make you so alarmed about what they're doing now. And this is even if you think all this is real, the reality of what they're driving in and the, the just disregard for privacy and constitutional rights is baffling. I mean, I'm not surprised at all. This is what they've, what I have been telling everybody, this is what they're going to do. And it turned out that we're right. But the point is, I'm still baffled that it's happening at such a quick pace and so in your face right now. But we'll start with the company itself and why it's actually, it's pretty staggering to realize that this company seemingly doesn't do much. They don't make much. They don't really accomplish anything, but yet they've been around and they've been financed using your tax dollars for a long time. Maybe it's because there's quite a bit more going on here. But let's start with this article coming from uh, John Rappaport. Yet again, always great. And I, I really do always hope that you guys will take the time to check out his website because he has some really great work going back long before this started. Moderna and the COVID vaccine, what kind of lunacy? And he says, it's completely correct to say that N uh, the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases under the National Institute of Health, right, the, in regard to the, you know, Dr. Fauci and all the same people we're talking about, to say that they will reap a profit on the Moderna vaccine. There are six NIH, I'm just going to say NIH scientists who work for Dr. Fauci, each of whom would get $150,000 a year indefinitely as their reward. So that's $900,000 to his subordinates every year in perpetuity. Let's just not, let's just, yeah, let's not pretend that that's not an obvious profit motive there for all these people. Like, cause the whole, the way, the reason he starts with that, right? The reason he begins with this point is because right now there's this air about how it's like offensive to suggest that anybody in official, but anyone wearing a white lab coat would ever dare to do something that's not in your best interest. Anyone who, anyone who's not six years old or blinded by mainstream media propaganda is very aware that that's ridiculous. P people have motivations. Humans have motivations. Finance is all, usually one of the leading motivators. So the idea that that's there, even if you don't want to believe that they would do it 
like pick something that was dangerous and because it was profitable, realize that even if there was a choice between two of them and one of them maybe, you know, a little bit less, but they'd make a billion dollars, they'd probably lean into that one, thinking to themselves and rationalizing, well, it's still safe though, right? See the point there, that they will take, they make choices. Money does this. Now, I'm not saying we know for sure that these people are doing that, but realize that there's a profit motive. Now, he says, why you buy a, you would you buy a used car from the company called Moderna? The U.S. government has shelled out $500 million to this Massachusetts-based biotech firm for a COVID vaccine. Now, realize, guys, this is your this is your money. You are paying for this. Now, first of all, we have to realize that that's not something we all agreed upon. That's not something that we all even agree, even believe in. But yet, you're still paying for it. Based on what? That's a good question. From Forbes, May 8th. It says, quote, it's a big bet for the 10-year-old company, which currently has 24 products in its pipeline, but nothing yet on the market. It's interesting that a company that doesn't have, that has never actually officially created something that anyone has used on the market is yet the leading, <coughs> excuse me, the leading company in regard to this. Now, the point would be that's obviously, in my opinion, because of the connections we're going to get into next, the, the, all of it, the, whether we're talking Fauci or, or, uh, uh, Salawi or any one of the people we're going to get into next, all the different people that are tied into all of this, that have at every step of the way are in positions to lean into Moderna because they benefit from it, just like the doctors were talked about. But these people are in official positions. People like Robert Langer, we're going to get to next. Now, the biotech sports, a huge market cap. Mind you, never making something that's ever gone to market, but yet they're valued at $17.5 billion. We see this happening all the time today with the way that our system functions. It's quite ridiculous. That because you're on the inside, things just tend to go your way. But it posted a, a get this, it, not ever making a, 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 a product, marketed at seven or, or valued at $17.5 billion, but posted a net loss of $514 million on revenues of just $60 million last year. So they lost 500. So the government gave them $500 million of your money and they lost that plus 14 million more on that year. Just think about that. And yet this is the company we're leaning into. Why? Well, because we need this and it's so important. And because, right, you just everything goes out the window when you're fearful, when there's danger, when we can point to something and say, because danger, we don't have to care that this company's failed and it doesn't produce and it's not making money and then it keeps, it's ridiculous. But because they want it to succeed, well, now because they have a fear, mo a fear motive, they can just ignore this. The same reason they can say, well, yes, you've got constitutional rights, but because fear, because virus, we're just going to put that on hold for a minute. Does anybody agree with that? Some people are fearful enough to say that that's the right thing to do, but I argue that no one agrees with that. And most of that incoming cash came from government's grants and research collaborations with big pharmaceutical companies. Right? Again, so it's just these companies that have a vested interest in profiting from the way this is going. Now, Moderna has never put a single park, a market on a product, excuse me, into the marketplace. Again, lost $514 million dollars. It took $60 million. So understand there that they made money, right? So they paid themselves salaries. They gave themselves bonuses. They paid from your tax dollars, even though they lost $514 million. But it somehow is worth billions. The COVID vaccine is working on, utilize, uh, working on utilizing brand new RNA technology. Again, the thing that's never been used, never been officially licensed for human use, never even been tested on humans until now. And by the way, this is something they've been trying to do for a decade or more and have been failing over and over and over. And suddenly we're going to do it by next year because we have to, <laughs> even though they've, that's like, are you telling me they weren't really trying before and now they're really trying? Clearly there's something weird going on here. I argue whether or not they succeed, it's not really going to matter. No RNA drug or vaccine product has ever been certified for public use. Other companies have tried and failed. Moderna is partnering with the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, the federal agency headed by Tony Fauci. Partnering with them. So, I mean, it's just, it's th this would be the equivalent of having any other industry and having the person who's choosing which one will make the money partnering with one of them, but pretending to be like, we're totally objective though. We're still considering Salafi, San Sanofi and, and Inovio and all the rest of them, but we're partnering with Moderna. That's not a conflict of interest there. Don't worry. 
As he says, how many red flags do you need? Seriously, guys, how many red flags? I mean, think about the conflict of interest on its face right now. That's remember, this is supposed to be against the rules, against the law. This doesn't matter when you're in the government, though, apparently. Now, what he points out here are the real, the real obvious things. One, Fauci and Gates and others are itching to get the RNA product approved for public use. As they ha as has, I mean, that's pretty clear based on their stance. Now, again, remember, I want to say something clear off the bat that you guys have known if you've been watching this channel, that suggesting that Fauci and Gates are responsible or involved in what the, in the negative things that are happening, which I completely agree with, is not to suggest, one, that the other people we might suggest are not, and two, that they're not tied back to those same people. Right. I mean, this this is the this is the oh, this is the frustratingly ignorant and simplified re reduced narrative because people want to pit it onto one group and try to omit responsibility from all the other people around that. What you're going to see right after we get past this is the connections that go from everyone to everyone, from Trump to Salawi, from Salawi to Moderna, from Moderna to I mean, it goes all the way around the circle. Right. Moderna to Gates, Moderna to 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 Fauci. Right. This is the point. Now, you could argue that he is a bumbling fool that's not aware of what's happening and they're tricking him the whole time. I'm not sure why that's any better. And I can give you that. But at the end of the day, he is responsible. As the president of the United States, he is responsible, tricked or not. Right? This is the, this is the ridiculous narrative here. So Fauci and Gates, I completely agree, are somebody we should, or people we should be concerned about right now. And I would say that about anybody in these positions, especially these two. As you guys have been watching this show, you should know by now. I, you guys probably know from the beginning of this, I wasn't actually very familiar with Fauci when this started. And I said in the beginning, he struck me as kind of just an nor average normal guy. Well, obviously that's changed over the time, in my opinion, based on his history and where he is and how much he's involved and the interesting dynamics between all the other people we've talked to. But just think about that going forward. But so he says, Fauci, Gates, and others are itching to get this product approved. Approved. A, a genetically modifying vaccine, right? Think about that. Even if they say it's safe for a year, two years, we don't know, 10 years down the line, you might not just grow a third head or, excuse me, that made a lot of sense, a second head or a third leg or anything else. I'm trying to be funny, but the point is that the idea of genetic modification, as crazy as that may have sounded, is absolutely what we're talking about here. Things that may end up happening down the line, they don't know because we've never done this before. But because of virus, we have to e not even do, we have to just brush past even the things they pretend they already do, right? All the safety things that we know that they aren't doing. So they just brush past the things that they already weren't doing. So nothing really changed. They just pretended they didn't do them, right? And I'll show you why. I'm going to go over the I can thing once again. It says, thus they can flood the world with all sorts of new vaccines at the drop of a hat. That's what they want. Now you could argue that this could be profit. Right for 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 a lot of people that are just breaking free of the make the prop the mainstream propaganda matrix, that's what makes sense to them, and that's part of it. Always profit is always a huge factor, but there's more to it, in my opinion. The idea that they would flood this, even to, even I mean, the, the, I would say the next most obvious and accepted reality is that these people are open about the idea that we need to diminish the population for the safety of all of us. Now think about how much that reflects on what they're saying today. We need to destroy the economy and destroy your small business and destroy your normal life for the safety of all of us, right? Even if you're not sick, even because that guy's sick, we need to hurt you to make sure we're all equally suffering and not all of us suffering a lot where some of us are not at all. We need to keep an even keel suffering, right? That's the idea. Same thing, right? So the idea is that we need to remove them. And Bill Gates has said this openly numerous times, that these, if we make these vaccines right, we can effectively get this population down by so-and-so percent. He said this numerous times on record. So the idea of wanting to be in a position to be able to flood the world with these things that you're in control of, that they're not testing for, that they're making profit from, is not that far-fetched. But we're not all to talk about it, right? You don't get any actual engaged discussion with interesting... Like, if we could sit down with somebody who actually is intelligent but disagrees and have an actual intellectual discussion and and then have people listen and come to their own conclusions, that's called an, that's called an informed populace, right? That's one of the real tenets and foundational points. It's what we need to actually have a representative government, but they, we don't. And that's why they make sure of that. We're not allowed to have that. You can't express your opinions. You can't go online and say, I think this. I think this is fake. This might be a lie. Today, you get censored for it. If it's in certain topics that they're very, very attentive to, such as coronavirus. I mean, just think about how crazy that is, especially coming from a government that we know for a fact has lied to us about situations just like this. Think about how literally insane that is. 
It's like having a guy who you know went to murder, went to prison for murder, and they come out, and there's a bunch of people around a person who was killed, and they just tell you, you just, you can't even talk about that guy who was the murderer. He's just off the, you can't look at him, right? Not allowed. And if you talk about him, we're going to put you in jail. It's like, well, geez, the guy's a murderer. Why wouldn't we think that, right? And then the guy comes forward and tells you, no, it's not, I mean, you can see where I'm going. It's crazy to not, to something slapping you in the face. The one person we shouldn't be trusting and we're not allowed to, to question him, I should say. Number two, if Fauci can ram through his partner Moderna's vaccine it, and get it approved and released, his heroic status among the dumbed-down public would skyrocket even higher. Now, I argue, first of all, that the idea that he's this heroic figure, I'm not sure about that. I know that there's a lot of people on one side of the false two-party paradigm that definitely sees him as some kind of like counter to Trump's I don't know, lies or deceptions or, or, or ignorance as they would see it. I definitely agree with some of that. But the point is, I, I don't even think within that that they see him as some kind of heroic figure, but maybe I'm wrong. Definitely on the other side, they don't. So to make it kind of a broad statement like that, I kind of disagree with, but his point is still the same, right? So if he does this, a, lot, a, a huge faction of people will say he's a hero. He made it. He did it. He got it through. He could write his own ticket, as he says, head of the giant National Institute of Health of Health, Director General of the World Health Organization. Three, does Fauci stand to gain a personal fortune from his connection with Moderna? If the COVID RNA vaccine is approved, he says, I don't know, but of course, and this is what we always have to consider, guys. Just because there's not something overtly on the book, something on its face saying, this guy has a profit motive here. He says a quiet backdoor money deal involving Fauci would be a simple proposition. And especially coming from a group that we know is corrupt from a government that we know is corrupt from companies that we know are corrupt let's not pretend that they wouldn't say hey here's some money behind the scenes for you to make sure this gets in now maybe he's got morals and would say no or maybe not the point is we we're not even allowed to consider things like this today but this is a company that we're talking about doesn't that hasn't really made anything they make that gets mo that your money and then spends it all and gives themselves money and then loses it and is trying to force in something that's never been tested that's completely unverified that probably doesn't work at all based on their own research, right? I mean, even saying that can get you censored, but that's based on actual research from up until now. It has not worked. So thinking all of this, remember where we are right now. This is the company we're talking about. This is the company that the new vaccine czar, by the way, that Donald Trump put in position, right? The guy who's on or was previously on the board of directors for Moderna. The guy who sold $12.4 million in Moderna stock after releasing, not him personally, but after the company released a ridiculous, I guess, study, preliminary, of only eight people. It was a safety study, but it wasn't even about safety. They said, look, we have antibodies, maybe. And suddenly it jumps almost 30%. He sells $12.4 million in stock, and then the next day it drops down back below where it was, almost like it was completely planned. Nonetheless, I mean, I wouldn't even argue, I wouldn't even say for sure that, I mean, look, at the end of the day, this is a crazy conflict of interest, and it ties back directly to Donald Trump, that which then ties to Moderna, which then ties to Fauci. So look, if we're going to pretend that Trump is completely innocent of all this, why then would he put this man on there? Okay, you could argue that he was yet again fooled. This guy's being fooled quite a damn bit, you would have to, have to point out, or he's a willing participant. Massive conflict of interest for Salawi, right? That's just something we have to very clearly see. Then you could jump to the next one. We have Robert Langer, working, who's a professor at MIT, who's on the board of directors now for Moderna. This is the guy that we just talked about right here, Robert Langer, the the guy that they're currently saying is the the the, the or the mainstream media, I should say, is saying that he is the common denominator in several coronavirus efforts, right? So, I mean, so it's interesting, right? But then you, with that, you're asking, how does that connect to what we were just saying? Well, you come to find out that he is working on the technology behind the, what the, the, the project behind the coronavirus idea, behind using the nanotechnology in the vaccines, which will then be used to fight the virus, which is something that leads back to DARPA, which leads back to Bill Gates, which leads back to Jeffrey Epstein, which leads back to all these people. The technology behind it draws partly on Langer's insights into nanoparticles. So he's at MIT working on nanotechnology. Those particles visible only with an electron microscope form tiny droplets that protect RNA molecules on their way to cells. Quite interesting, wouldn't you say? So he's working on the very thing that they're trying to drive forward. 
Okay, back over here to Langer again on the, remember he's on the Moderna board. The, com- the, the board of the vaccine company that they're trying to drive forward, that the vaccine czar himself has m- had money invested in, was on the board of, working re- with Trump appointed. He's working on the technology they're trying to use to put into these vaccines, which is openly being discussed right now. And don't forget that Bill Gates himself made donations to MIT through Jeffrey Epstein. And I hope you should read this article if you have the time, here are all the tech moguls connections. It's ridiculous, right? Right this moment, we should be able to realize how crazy it is. One, that Bill Gates is still where he is with all of the overt ties. I mean, the guy had ties to Jeffrey Epstein after the fact, when he was, after he was arrested and charged for pedophilia and sex trafficking. So clearly Gates had no problem with that. So he used him to donate to MIT, right? And remember that Epstein himself has tied the whole as Whitney Webb reported on this show the idea that we're talking about somebody who was trying to reframe himself as this this technocratic financier right he was always talking about leaving you know kind of the idea was that put his Epstein stamp on humanity forever right using tech the idea of technology the idea of these exact kind of research focuses right the same thing ties to MIT ties to Harvard Epstein we talked about this already and the ties then we talk about Charles Lieber, the man who worked at Harvard as a professor, also working on nanotechnology, working on what you're looking at right here in regard to planting, like basically nanotechnology that can be put into viruses, right? That could then essentially mimic viruses, which again, could be literally what we're dealing with right now, which is certainly, I mean, this, if we have to consider if this is something that they were working on right before all this started, that that's essentially possibly what we're dealing with right now. And maybe that's why this is all being so hush-hush and covered up. Now, remember, this nanotech part is where we're going to get into next, which is why I find this so incredibly relevant. But what I'm trying to show you now is the clear ties to all of these people back to the center stage. Then we have Robert Cadleck. The guy, remember, we talked about in regard to the anthrax vaccines, in regard to bio-emergent solutions. The company that was making the anthrax vaccines before, uh, acutely tied in with the whole anthrax false flag and everything before 9-11 and all the lies that were told then, knowingly. Remember I told you before, they lost a lawsuit, the Pentagon, because they forcefully gave vaccines to people during the anthrax scare that they knew, knew were going to hurt people and they lost that lawsuit. That was Robert Cadillac. That's who you're looking at. He is also the... Assistant Director, Assistant Secretary of the Health and Human Services right now, which, by the way, as we just talked about, has complete control right now. The sole person you're looking at has complete control over the strategic national stockpile, which means he gets to choose which ones we use, such as vaccines, such as PPE, such as massive profit motive, right? And this is a guy who knowingly hurt people with vaccines before, and he's choosing. So do you think he's going to be concerned with Moderna? Do you think he's going to quibble about possible issues that, with safety tests? I mean, I'll leave it for you to make your own decision on that. I think you have to base it on his past actions in the exact same position. Knowingly hurting people with vaccines that he knew for a fact were not safe and put them out anyway. More than once, mind you. More than once. And that's on top of this which we talked about the other day. This is a this is a this is an actual lawsuit United States District Court Southern District of New York and this is from 2018. But what this showed and still shows to this day, the Informed Consent Action Network, they discovered with their FOIA request an actual and they just they put a FOIA request in order to get the safety records that were required due to the uh the what is it called again? I'm it's not seeing it right here. The 1986 Act uh, right here, the National Childhood Vaccine Injury Act of 1986. So this was something that mandated that they had to produce safety reports every two years for these vaccines and show where they were trying to improve. So the I, I can said, we want to see these things. And for eight months, they refused, even though they were obligated because of, you know, FOIA requests, because we pretend that they're somehow obligated to do that. And they were, they were just refusing. They say, screw it. We don't care about your FOIA request. We're not going to show you. Gee, I wonder why they would do that. Well, we found out. Because after a lawsuit, the lawsuit you're staring at here, ICANN made, forced them. They forced them via the lawsuit to, to provide the copies. The, the safety reports to Congress or admit that they never filed the reports. Now, the result of the lawsuit, as we just pointed out, was that Health and Human Services... 
right? The very people we're talking about right now, Robert Cadillac had to finally and shockingly admit that it never, not even once, submitted a single biennial report to Congress detailing the improvements in the vaccine safety. This speaks volumes to the seriousness by which safety, vaccine safety is treated at Health and Human Services. By the way, again, we know that that doesn't matter because this is the very guy who knowingly pushed out a vaccine for anthrax that hurt people. So let's not be shocked by the fact that he's not doing any safety studies. That's probably go, that's part, part and parcel with what we're talking about. <laughs> well, you can't do safety studies on something you know is unsafe. So it's all, it's all the same thing. This is just a reinforcement of the same narrative that they don't care, that they're hiding stuff, not doing their job because it's about something other than actually helping you. And it heightens the concern that HHS doesn't have a clue as to the actual safety profile of the now 29 doses and growing of vaccines given by one year of age. Now, remember, this was in 2018, I mean, so it's way more than 29 doses now. But reflect on this, that Health and Human Services, this guy right here, and, and of course, Alex Azar, who's the, the secretary, the, the very guy who's involved as well, the very guy that as we talked about recently, went to Donald Trump in January talking about this and Trump only wanted to talk about vaping, which again, <laughs> decide for yourself what that ultimately means. But this is the same group, completely in control of the strategic national stockpile, the same group that's not doing their job. Now, the argument that they make, by the way, which I find all, just laugh out loud, first of all, just laugh at the Wikipedia page and what they how they frame this. First of all, this is called the Informed Consent Action Network, right? Not saying anything other than the fact that we should have the right if you understand what informed consent means, to be informed about the possible benefits and negatives and then come to your own decision on it. That's informed consent. That's supposed to be a pillar, a foundational principle of our medical system, but we just don't care about that today. And this is what it says about it on Wikipedia. The Informed Consent Action Network is one of the main anti-vaccine groups in the United States. By the way, that's not at all what they are. Now, you could, they try to frame it that way because people like Del Bigtree are the ones coming out and calling out the obvious faults that we're calling out now as well. With the movie Vax and all the same stuff. This is, this is the same problem. The same thing they tried to expose during Vax and the same thing that got covered up then. Even, even despite all of the hard data, the hard evidence, the smoking gun. And again, reflect on how, how crazy that is. The kind of all-encompassing control that that shows you. That they can ha we can be showing you the data and the entirety of the mainstream media can shout it down and say you're fake. Say it's fake. You're false. It's conspiracy theory. They're, all, they're fighting for informed consent. Del Bigtree himself will argue that there are uses for vaccines and some of them are beneficial. And, and it's, it's kind of the same idea. It's about the, in, the intent behind them. Now, for, all, for I should be clear, for all I know, he's changed his... I haven't been watching Del Bigtree exclusively. Maybe he's changed his opinion. But that's what I remember him saying in the past. So here they are saying it's just an anti-vax group. Talk about reductive. Not even close to what they're saying. So that's just a lie, pretty much. Founded in 2006 by Del Bigtree, it says it spreads myths about the risks of vaccines and contributes to the vaccine hesitancy. This is why Wikipedia is an absolute joke. This is why people in college are told you're not allowed to use Wikipedia as a source, even though every single thing you look at on... Oh, I thought that was a video I had up. Well, every single thing you look at, as I lose my place, on YouTube about COVID-19, we'll link to a Wikipedia page or anything else that you're talking about, right? It's a, because they want you to go through this. Why? Because that's controlled by them. As all colleges anywhere will tell you, you're not allowed to because it's not definitive, because it's not actually a source. It's manipulated by people who have agendas. To sp it spreads myths, or, or you could also frame that as they tell you the actual reality of the things that the government doesn't want you to hear. Yeah, of course, they spread myths, which has been identified by the World Health Organization as one of the 10 top global threats. Understand that that's a real deal right there, that the World Health Organization is saying that vaccine hesitancy is one of the largest risks, 10 global health threats. Think about how scary that is. They are building this right now in front of you. Now, here's the point. The lawsuit they talk about right here. In two, they have, of course, they make a point to put this in there because they have to challenge it. Here's what it says. In 2018, ICANN filed a Freedom of Information lawsuit to force the, the FDA and the National Institute of Health and the Department of Health and Human Services to release administrative reports on childhood vaccine injury. That, that, that HHS is required to file with Congress. So that right off the bat, HHS is legally required to do so. Right? This isn't some kind of, this is the, this, that was a, the law. They didn't do it. So that's, that is a, that is a fact. No one seems to care about that. So what they say here is HHS replied that they could not find any such reports. Oh, well, there you go then, right? <laughs> Case closed. They just couldn't find them. Solid. 
Sort of how the Pentagon just can't find trillions of dollars, right? They just can't find it. Whoops. By the way, even if they can't find them, they still broke the law by not submitting them. But see, nobody cares about this because it's all about making this ICANN group seem like crazy conspiracy theorists. It says, well, ICANN claimed the absence of these reports means that the federal government has neg neglected to properly study the effects of vaccines. Scientists in the fact-checking site, PolitiFact, God, just the last place we should be looking, pointed out a large number of in-depth studies were undertaken and their results shared with the public, even though HHS failed to file the reports. So all they can say is, oh, well, yeah, they didn't do what they were supposed to, but look, there are studies over here that said generally what they should have done. <laughs> oh, okay. I mean, think about how crazy that is. They don't, they just, they're just skipping over the fact that for, since 1986, they have failed to do even once what they were obligated to do by law because of safety for vaccines. And all Wikipedia can say is, oh, well, they claimed it was some conspiracy. But look, here's a report that says one thing that's also backed by government, you know, funded by government money. They didn't do what they were supposed to, guys. That's a pretty damn obvious point. This is the reality. This is the truth. They did not do what they were supposed to. They're not doing it now. So when people like this are in positions who have done this before, who are in HHS, who have ties to Moderna, who have ties to Donald Trump, who have ties to Robert Langer, who have ties to the vaccine czar, all in this little club circling around the problem, we need to see the reality and how it ties back to Trump, ties back to Fauci, ties back to Gates, ties back to everybody, including, again, Charles Lieber. This is the important one, though, in regard to the topic today. Right? The idea that this is about the nanotechnology and what this is leading toward. This is the idea of the technocracy today. This is where this is being driven toward. And the whole illusion of the biodefense system, which is bio warfare, making weapons and pretending you're defending us with vaccines that are made from those weapons, which makes no sense, as anyone honest will tell you, we can see that this is about creating a control matrix about the, all the things that they have constantly been trying to force in. Now, remembering Lieber and the nanotech and Harvard and all this same stuff, <clears throat> I want you to think about this as we bring to the next topic. Now, this, <laughs> excuse me, is something that was shared with me by wetacoalition.org, and I'll show you his website when we get to the end here. Does great work, by the way. And this is something he shared with me a while back. Now, right off the bat, and he can tell you himself, I was very suspicious about this. The, the, the logo alone, I'm like, this is fake. It can't be, this can't be real. It's obviously a, a ridiculous joke. I mean, the, the logo looks stupid, but this is legitimate. I've run through this myself and I can, and, and as much as I can tell, as much as we can tell anything is legitimate today. I'll show you why right now. But this is the point. F future strategic issues, future warfare, circa 9 to 2025. Okay, this was, this was, this was produced and published 28 days before 9-11, 2001, 28 days before 9-11, 2001. The whole thing, as you can see the slides here, micro dust weaponry, some explosive smart dust opportunities. Trust me, it gets way worse than that. I'm going to go through some slides for you, but here's the opening just so you can see the beginning. Now, I agree that the slides looked interesting and, and looked almost cheesy, but as I, Whitney and I spoke earlier and a lot of different people I spoke with, the idea is... Most of these government sites do look pretty <laughs> low grade, and I'll show you some as we go through it. But just before we get into what these actually show you and why it's so incredibly related to what's going on right now and that they were planning this and talking about this all the way back in 2001. And you could argue that 9-11 was maybe their first attempt at rolling this out, and this is the second attempt, right? Just like Trump said, I don't know, so many months ago that what we really need is another 9-11-like event to bring the country together. Weird. That's not alarming at all. Sort of how with the project new the project for a new American Century document, rebuilding America's defenses, also said way back then that we need another Pearl Harbor like event to bring the country together. Oh, and then right after that we saw 9-11. And then oops, right after Trump said that, we saw this happening. Interesting, right? Now, this is a document about what they're seeing for the future and what they're planning to do and how they're planning to use this. Now, this wasn't meant to be seen. This was pulled off the, the De Department of Defense website, as I understand it, but it wasn't something that was completely put out for the world to see. Now, but this is not necessarily stuff that they keep sacred. As again, I'll show you when we go through the slides that this is something that they do all the time. It just never gets reported on. It also doesn't mean, as a matter of fact, that this is something that they are planning to do, but rather just something that was being proposed. Right? But we have to consider that this is always on the table. 
things that they are actively working for because of all the different things we've already shown you. The DARPA information, the things that they're currently working on, injectable nano platforms, the injectable gels, the quantum dye tattoo things. These are things that they're working on now. So remember that this isn't some hypothetical conspiracy theory. They're literally doing them. The point to see here now is that they were doing this in 2001. And all this stuff is what they're now justifying because it helps fight coronavirus. But that's just because that's the excuse being used today. So as we go forward, I want you to, first of all, uh, oh, actually, I was going to go through this first so you can see the information below it. And this, this is on an internet, internet archive site. All the links for this will be in the show notes. When you're, well, and technically, they're posted on the website right now. Now, it says that Dennis M. Bushnell, this is the person who works at NASA Langley Research Center. Gotta love Langley Research Center. And it says that he is the chief scientist at NASA Langley Research Center. And it goes on with his information. And it says the above presentation was given on August 14th, 2001 at the fourth annual testing and training for readiness symposium and ex exhibition organized by the National Defense Industrial Association, the NDIA. All right, that's what's important. Okay, so as we go through it, and this is what I was going to show you. This is him. So you can see, first of all, that he definitely is part of NASA. Okay, here, as you can see right up here, is the website. This is where it was pulled from. This is in the Wayback Machine, right? But this is the website. DTIC.mil. Go to the next one. Here is the posting on the website, the 4th Annual Testing and Training Readiness Symposium. In this, you can see right here posted training and testing for future strategic issues, circa 2025. Dennis M. Bushnell. Right? So it's, this is posted on that website. But here's how you can see for real that this is what we're talking about. Here is the actual website itself. This is DTIC.mil, the NDIA. Say, this is the extension of the same page, discover.dci.dtic.mil, Defense Technical Information Center. Okay, so the point is, as, far, as much as we can justify or verify anything, this is legitimate. Anything today, we have to realize how extensive fakes and forgeries can be today. But realize that this stuff is actually pulled from the website and saved from on the Wayback Machine from this website, which is legitimate. Okay, so that, that's established. We have to realize this stuff is real. This is a this is a, a proposal. This was a slide slides uh, a a slide a slide presentation that was presented to NASA and the Department of Defense in regard to how they were going to deal with certain issues going forward, which is something we have to realize. And oh, by the way, this, this is wetacoalition.org. I hope you will check out his website because he does good work, and really appreciate him reaching out today with this because it's really important. Now let's go through some of these slides. Now again, I really want you to think of what this is and how it applies to today. And this was 2001. So the two things on my mind are, one, we have to realize that this is not some new concoction that they designed to fight coronavirus, but rather something that they've always been trying to do and periodically forcing it in based on new agendas, right? At this point, it was based on whatever was happening. They later tried to force it in based on mass shootings. They later tried to force it in based on terrorism. Now they're trying to force it in based on virus, right? Same thing. So let's not pretend this is not something that they're doing to help you. This is an agenda that's always been there, right? On top of that, we need to realize that this whole thing shows you that the point is offense. The point is weapons. The point is control. And that's very clear on this. Some interesting, and by the way, this is only, this is only what, I think 10 of the slides? There's 113 of them. So please go through and read them for yourselves. Some interesting then year bioweapon possibilities. That is what that stands for. A flak toxin, natural, parts per billion, carcinogen. Right? These are just not interesting then year possibilities for bioweapons, airborne varieties of Ebola, Lassa. So right there, understand that this is in 2001, and they're openly talking about using varieties of Ebola for airborne bioweapons. They would have denied that then, and they're sure as hell denying that now. And around 2014 is when they quietly tried to pretend like they just shifted into biodefense because it was dangerous and all they did was outsource it to places like China and kept doing the same thing everywhere. And this was that same thing, as we just talked about yesterday, that they said on the record, all they had to do was just tweak a couple of words and all the guys had to do between 2014 and 15 was just submit the same information as the bioweapons, but just tweak a couple of words and then they get approved. The meaning, the point is that the research was exactly the same. All they changed was the, the way they described it. So it's weapons, guys. This is weapons research, as it always has been. 
binary agents distributed via imported products. Please see how important that is. They're talking about bioweapons distributed via imported products, vitamins, clothing, food. What an interesting scenario. I don't know. Remember the idea of the Iraqi hats? Anybody remember that? They got just kind of brushed off very quickly, but was very clearly something that I found to be incredibly relevant. Now, of course, it could have been a, it could have been a lie. It could have been a deception by the Iraqi government. It could have been any number of things. But the fact that they're openly talking about it, like right now, openly saying that they're theorizing about using these things to attack people with airborne products or even imported products, vitamins, clothing, food, things that they need, but really they're bioweapons. Here it is. This is the defense minister, Moshe Yaron. Oops. Uh, Sorry about that. I forgot I had that up from before. I was going to play that the other day. The Irish member of parliament talking about talking about the Israeli government. Hey, here's the point. If you remember this, guys, this was the Iraqi scientist who's saying that he tested and found coronavirus in hats, red hats, that were given to people in Iraq to support, or like, from the U.S. government. Now, this got completely ignored. No one talked about it. But I found it to be quite interesting. It, again, it could, he could be lying. But I found it relevant to the whole point. And of course, remember as well that the whole program in event 201, before this all started, do you remember what the term was they used for the virus in event 201? That's right. It was CAPS, C-A-P-S. Just something to chew on. Back to the point. Gen uh, uh, genomically targeted pathogens, individual, societal. You know what that means? Gene focused. Individual, societal, I don't know, such as creating a weapon that focuses on only Chinese people or focuses only on Iranian people or focuses on specifically certain kinds of people. Some interesting then-year bioweapon possibilities. We're just getting started. Long-term fingerprintless campaign as opposed to shock and awe bioweapons. Long-term fingerprintless campaign. We'll get into that next. The fingerprintless, meaning things they can use where they won't tie back to them. Such as, you know, opposed to the open bombing and bioweapon use as, you know, Iraq and Iran, things they've already done, right? You realize the point of that. They're saying that opposed to the shock and awe bioweapons that we've used before, <laughs> right? Never were supposed to. It was always illegal. No one cares. Effects of low power microwaves. U.S. Army, SRI, water read. Behavioral performance dec um, uh, decrements, seizures. Gross alteration in brain function, 30 to 100% increases in blood flow, lethality. Do you realize what they're talking about here, right? Things like 5G. It says interactions, but for, actually, no, I'll take that back. Specifically, this is low power microwaves. But you have to understand that we're talking about similar type of technology. See, that, that that's 0.4 to 3 gigahertz, right? The point is this is what the low microwaves can do, which means that they know what the 5G level can do to you if they so choose. They already know this, the lethality, interactions between low power. So this is when they pretend like they don't know. That's a lie. U.S. Human Brain Project, begun in early 90s, funded by 16 organizations across five agencies, National Institute of Health, right? Recognize that. Human Brain Project. So people like Fauci, involved with the National Institute of Health, are also working on things like the Human Brain Project, which they won't openly tell you about. Things like, you know, machine brain interfaces. Things like nanotechnology. Almost like it's all tied together. The DOD, NASA, Department of Energy, aka Neuroinformatics, Intersection of Neuroscience and Informatics, Exploding Field, 10,000 individual presentations at annual meeting of Society for Neuroscience, determining detailed neuroanatomy of the human brain, use of IT to study the brain, use of brain info to aid in IT and artificial intelligence. 2001, guys. But listen to them now when they tell you that all of this is about fighting coronavirus. Major emerging law enforcement issues, right? Don't you love how they concern themselves with not the fact that they're breaking the law, but that they might be issues for them because they know that they're illegal. <laughs> Don't you love that? They're so honest and so law-abiding. Privacy, right? Ubiquitous micro nanosensors. Okay? Gotta be concerned about how they'll care about their privacy. Not that the privacy is the issue, but that we'll care that privacy is being violated. That's the problem. 
because they're sure as hell rolling out the ubiquitous micro nano sensors all the way back in 2001. IT net crime, wide spectrum, right? This is the this is the pre-crime, guys. This is the idea of having a crime, a an internet of things, technocratic control matrix over everything you're doing. Bio crime, binary pathogens, genetics. So the idea of using bio activity. You know, they know that's against the law. Protection of human electronic implants, protection of, of CONUS beyond terrorism, societal disaffection, upheaval caused by rapid technology changes. Right? So, so the fact that we're just unhappy that they're putting these things on us, that's a problem that they need to deal with, right? Not, not address the problem that we don't want it, but just deal with the problem of how to make us accept it. That's the future. That's the new normal, guys. Biorevolution applications, farm animals, farm as in pharmaceutical, drugs, spare parts, Gosh, this is just disgusting, the way that they frame this stuff about us, like we're cattle, right? Like we're, that's not, that's not what they're saying right there, but just the whole thing is about, you know, that we are just tools being used in their projects. Fast growing plants on near surface, uh, near sea surface and seawater integrated plants for biomass energy, bio revolution applications, polymer growing plants. Look at this, spider genes in goats allow spider silk spinning from goat's milk for biosteel. Think about that. 3.5 times strength for amrid fibers for armor. That's the, so in 2001 they're talking about something they've already known about. They're already working on. Spider genes in goats allow spider silk spinning from goat milk for biosteel. Imagine what they've done over the last 19 years. Kind of makes your head spin, doesn't it? Some sensor swarms this is when we get into the real scary stuff, smart dust, right? The idea that we have things the size of dust, sort of, you know, the things like this, the things that are, you know, virus size that are, you know, that can be essentially implanted and mimic these things, right? Nanotechnology, that's where we're at, right? So now we're talking about the idea of smart dust in the same regard. Cubic um, millimeter or less, I believe, combined sensors, comms, and power supplies floats in air currents, Oh, weird, almost like a virus, right? That's kind of interesting. Nanotags, placed on everything, everywhere. Identification and status info, co-opted, insects. 2001, guys, 2001. Placed on everything, everywhere. Yeah, that's totally it. Yeah, because this, this, is, this is why they're so concerned about your privacy, right? Because <laughs> it's like, well, again, it's not about concerned. It's about concerned that you care about it. We're placing nanotags everywhere on everything. And co-opting insects, because that's totally normal, right? Some explosive smart dust opportunities. Optional positioning of explosive dust. Dust air explosives. Formation of explosive lenses. Infiltration of deeply buried other such targets. Using all this stuff to attack weapons, not defense. Weapons. Micro dust weaponry. A mechanical analog to bio. Micron sized mechani um, uh, mechani mechanized dust which is distributed as an aerosol and inhaled into the lungs. Dust mechanically bores into lung tissue and executes various pathological missions. <clears throat> I mean, just take a moment and really take that in. Now realize, guys, again, that this is something that they were talking about that doing, that they were doing in 2001, right before 9-11. So if we have people like Charles Lieber, and people like Robert uh, Langer. Where was it? Right here? There, Robert Langer. Who are both working in leading facilities and leading people in the field of nanotech. And we're talking about the idea of putting it in viruses. 20 years later. Can you really just wrap your mind around how much has evolved since then? And if then, at this time, they were talking about distributed as aerosol and inhaled into the lungs as a micro dust weapon, dust that mechanically bores into lung tissue and ex executes various pathological missions. Geez, guys, can we not see the overlap to today? Can we not think critically and consider that this might be what we're dealing with? Now, I'm not even saying anything other than we should be considering that. But the fact is we're being shut down right now. We're being told we can't think about anything other than what we're being told is happening, even as we know that's not what's happening. I'm not saying we know what is, but I know we can know, I can pre pretty sure tell you that we know what they're telling us is not the truth. 
a wholly new class of weaponry, which is legal, they say. Can you wrap your mind around that? That they think this is legal to use micro dust that aerosols and inhales into the lungs and then bores into your lung tissue and, ca and can execute various pathological missions. That sounds totally legal. Apparently it's legal when you use it on bad guys, right? Except when you become the bad guy. Often, here we go, fingerprintless bio archipelago, like a you know, grouping of islands. Bacteriological, viruses, prions, parasites, fungi, right? Realize what they're saying here. These are all things that can be used, weaponized, for a fingerprintless bio effort, right? So something that cannot be traced back to them. Fatal to disabling, short to long time scales, anti-flora, direct. I mean, this is what we're talking about, biohacking. So let's not pretend this is about defense, guys. Some interesting then-year bioweapon possibilities. Oh, I think I had this one there twice. Rapidly growing genomic insta bio on the battlefield. It says sustain sustainment, food, water, energy, meds, health, computing, clothing. Greatly reduces logistics tail and enhances capabilities. Lethality. Capabilities enhancement, armor, concealment, sensors, bioweapons, virus into biocomputer, explosives, rapidly growing genomic, that basically, I would argue this is super soldiers, bio on the battlefield, at the very, very least, the weaponization and, and implementation of these things on the battlefield. What is apparently legal? Don't you love the way, don't you... You don't you love the way they the play semantic? This is like Pompeo saying, well, it's not illegal per se, knowing that he's completely full of it, right? Knowing that that doesn't even mean anything. This is the point of coming back here to that slide and saying, you know, which is legal? <laughs> Let's put a question mark after that. What is apparently legal? In quotes. Don't you just love that? It's in quotes. Microwave RF anti-functional and anti-personnel weapon. That's apparently legal. <laughs> And this is the micro. This is the, the microwave RF anti-functional anti-personnel weaponry. That's 5G, guys. That's what that is. That's where it came from. And that's not. That's not crazy. That's like that's. Uh, this is a fun. This is a verifiable point. For those that may think that sounds crazy, I've talked about this and shown you on the show. That's where it came from. Crowd control technology in regard to how it was being applied for the military was where it came from. Chemical anti-functional weaponry. Chemical psychological effects via sensory organs weaponry. Smell. Psychological effects using sensory organ weaponry. Chemical personnel incapacitation weaponry. Non-warfare, hostage, terrorism only. Psy war. Acoustic weaponry, mechanical micro dust. Apparently, these are legal, in quotes, whatever that ultimately means. Which should pretty much clearly show you that they're more than willing to roll forward with all of these. And I think the point is that they did. We This is what they introduced and then went forward from there. And that's where we are now. That's what they're rolling out now. Because I think from then, 2001 to now, they effectively had these things created, effectively have them ready. And now this is the first moment when they said, let's roll it out. Let's make it happen now. What do we need? Well, we need a virus. And executing bio... Uh, Calmative, VEE, -E, Venezuelan equine. This is the, the vir one of the viruses they're pointing to. Ideal in cap bioweapon agent. Ideal, right? Perfect. Weaponized by the US and USSR in the 50s and the 60s. Realize that, guys. So everything they're pointing to and saying the, it was the Russians, the USSR, they were the ones doing it, and that's why we were defending our nope, it was weaponized by both of them. Easily transmitted via aerosol. Highly infectious, low fatality rate. One to five day incubation. They're talking about the uh, the, e, the VEE. Three week recovery. Tested on humans. Operation White Coat. No treatment available. Tested on humans. Now again, there are a 113 of these slides that I hope you'll go through and look at. So many of that don't even relate to, there's plenty of other really crazy things in there. These are the ones that we decided were related to right now. The idea that we're talking about working on all this stuff, building this stuff, knowing that this is things that they pretend they're not doing. Working with the Department of Defense, working with NIH, working with NASA, working with all these people that pretend that they're not involved in this stuff. That's why nobody reports on this. And of course, to jump over to something else, tested on humans is where we are today, right? The possibility that's what's happening now. 
and realize that the precedent is very much there. And you'll be absolutely, you'll probably fall off your chair when you realize where Operation White Coat in regard to testing all this stuff on humans was being worked at or being operated from. Operation White Coat was a biodefense medical research program carried out by the United States Army at Fort Detrick, Maryland between 1954 and 1973. Weird, it's almost like it all roads lead back to Fort Detrick, right? The program pursued medical research using volunteer enlisted personnel who were eventually nicknamed White Coats. Sure, they'll tell you that they were volunteers, but it's interesting when you come down here to find out when the program was discontinued. Look at what it says. It says Operation White Coat came to an end in 1973 when the draft for the U.S. military ended and thus no more conscientious objectors were to be conscripted. So wait a minute, were they volunteers or were they being conscript, 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 geez, I can't talk, conscripted? I mean, that seems like a contradict, contradiction, wouldn't you say? Now you could argue that people are being drafted and then volunteering, but the point is you come to find out that that's kind of not what happened. This report coming from the UCLA, from people that were there, this is, this is actually from March, Washington Post in March 6, or excuse me, May 6, 2003, but look what it says. This is talking about this is talking about Operation White Coat. First of all, it's making it clear that it was the, the draftees sprawling uh, the Dietrich compound in Fort Dietrich. Okay, it says during this time, White Coats had the model. Uh, right here was they were told that they could back out of this test at any point before it began. But by all accounts, the Army does not appear to have reneged on that promise. Though some former participants have described a subtle, implicit coercion. Turn down too many tests, and you could be sent to Vietnam. Let's not pretend that this is not always there. First of all, the reality of what these people were was that most of these, almost entirely, were all Seventh-day Adventist church uh, members who were all actively saying that they like basically had religious issues with going to Vietnam and going to war. So it says these volunteers, all conscientious objectors, right? Basically meaning that they didn't want to go, they didn't want to fight. So they took the people that didn't want to fight, which means they didn't have any use for them anywhere else, and basically put them into this program, and then subtly coerced them into doing it and said, well, if you don't, then we're going to send you to the war, even though it violates your religion. I mean, you see where this goes. So to pretend like these people were just kind of happy volunteers is, as always, a gross misrepresentation. So once again, we're talking about being tested on by your own, pe by your own authority figures, by the own people in the military, by the government, on Americans to test out how this was working. Just realize how we are going forward to today. Now, here's the one I was going to reference before of another one. This is 100% legitimate, 100% verified from 2018, I believe. Just to show you, this is stuff. And again, no one reported on this, as I recall. Human Systems Roadmap Review. Human Systems Community of Interest Activity Membership. Human Service, uh, where was the one I was looking for? State of Technology Focus Areas, right? And so, this is this is the idea right here. Natural human machine teaming, human machine teaming, intelligent adaptive aiding, human information interpretation, and look at the, the picture. This is what we're talking about, right? This is it's the idea, oops, of the crossover between, it's the brain machine interface, right? That's what all this stuff is about. Human machine teaming collaboration. Learning machines, human machine collaboration. And the more you go through this, you find out that's exactly what it is. And it's all the same kind of next level crossover between humanity and technocracy. But the point is, this stuff is always there. They're always talking about it, and no one ever reports on it. Here's another one The Pentagon is building a self aware killer robot army fueled by social media. First paragraph says an unclassified 2016 Department of Defense document, the Human Systems Roadmap Review, reveals that the U.S. military plans to create artificial intelligence autonomous weapon systems, which will use predictive social media analytics to make decisions on lethal force with minimal human involvement. This is the future that they want to build, that they're building now, regardless of whether you want it. This is what's always been coming. This is what they've always been preparing for, guys. It's always been there. These slideshows and different information, it just takes you caring enough to find it, to read it, to look at it. It's always been there. And these things, they just pretend are crazy. And then when we speak up about them, they say, oh, it's crazy conspiracy theory. And they know that they've made that work to the point where people will go, oh, I conspire? Oh, okay, then I won't, I won't even look at it. And that's ignorance, right? That is social engineering. That's what this is all about. But today, people are waking up.
more than I think I've ever seen. People are very quickly recoiling from what this really is. And the point is it's time to take action. It's time to do something about it. Because if we don't, this is the future that they're building. It's coming full speed ahead right now. Remember, all the stuff we just talked about from 2001 to today, they've been building this. Whether it's terrorism, mass shootings, or whatever else they want to use, they're trying to force this in. And realize that means even if this is real to you, even if it is real, the point is that they are using it anyway. And none of this actually helps you fight coronavirus, despite how they're trying to frame it. FEMA tells states to hand public health data over to Palantir. Oh, great. That seems fantastic. Palantir is co-founded by key Trump ally Peter Thiel. Signed government contracts last month worth approximately, this was, uh, this article is from May 21st, 2020. So when it says last month, rec remember that. Signed government contracts last month worth approximately $24.8 million to provide the Department of Defense, oh, excuse me, the Department of Health and Human Services, so Robert Cadlick, Alex Azar, with data management software to track health infrastructure deficiencies and forecast where future needs will emerge through a platform known as HHS Protect, which I was looking through a little bit earlier, didn't see anything immediately stand out to me, but I'll be looking a little bit more. You guys should do the same. The company's tools integrate a staggering 187 data sets containing information on everything from hospital inventories, medical supply chains, diagnostic and geographic testing data, demographic stats, and more. Now, the very next paragraph says right off the bat, because they know this is where people's minds will go, because this is what is happening, by the way, despite what they say here, those data sets do not include information from identifiable patients, according to HHS, of course, which experts say keeps the arrangement from running afoul of privacy laws, because it's so clear how much they care about privacy laws, right? I argue one of two things. It's either that they use the word identifiable, to me, to, to, you know, to basically that means they, they have your data, but they just pretend that they can't really look and see whose data it is. That's obviously, that, that's my first guess at what that means. That doesn't mean that they couldn't just scratch a little further and say, oh, this is this guy. But on the surface, it doesn't show them. And that's the argument that they're not running afoul of privacy. Or I will just simply argue that according to HHS is the point that they're just not telling you what's really going on. But right now, it's very clear that this is exactly what's happening. That they're absolutely using your personal data. And that's already been shown. They've already openly said that they're handing over the data. Uh, uh, James Corbett and James Evan Pilato just talked about this. They are happily handing over your data. Medical institutions, everyone handing it over to the government right now because virus. So even though according to HHS, <laughs> this doesn't even make a difference because we know for a fact it's happening. But I argue it's that probably. That they're trying to play semantics with it, play word games identifiable patients. No, they're giving your data to whoever needs it because virus. But here's what Whitney Webb had to say about Palantir. And remember that this, this was back on August 5th, 2019, in regard to mass shootings. I have a feeling, she says, that companies connected to Trump, Trump excuse me, connected to Trump donors and allies like Palantir. So again, recognize the tie to Trump and everybody else. For all those trying to make it very reductive about one group or one person, realize that they're trying to fool you or tr just fooling themselves in the process. All of these people are tied, right? I mean, just, I mean, just think about what we're talking about here. FEMA and the idea of tied to, to, to Peter Thiel and the idea of handing over the data to the health. I mean, th that then leads into the concept of the, the that data being used by the National Institute of Health and everybody else involved, right? So the point is that it's all tied together. But as she says... I have a feeling that companies connected to Trump, donors and allies like Palantir, like Carbine, remember Carbine 911 is the company tied back to Unit 8200, tied back to Israel, that, wor that works on routing 911 calls, and other pre-crime and energy, excuse me, emergency software companies are going to benefit a lot from this. Just call it a hunch. And she was right. The, <coughs> excuse me. The point is that these are emergency software companies, pre-crime companies that are now being applied to coronavirus. Surprise, surprise. It's almost like they're just trying to push it in wherever they can. Like we've been saying over and over and over, which is what's happening, guys. <laughs> These companies have been trying to force it in every way they can. Now they're doing it again. Maybe because their company's connected to Trump or maybe because they've been tied in from the beginning. But as you can see from her, his tweet, he's saying, he, or, uh, the, the tweet is saying, President Trump says the internet and social media are helping fuel mass shootings. Right? Same thing. All the things they were trying to force in right th then during shootings are now being forced in because coronavirus. 
And he has directed the U.S. Justice Department to work with local agencies and social media companies to detect attackers before they strike. Doesn't that remember that? Please realize how that's the exact same thing happening now. Except now it's about stopping the virus before it strikes. Oops. Here's another one. Peter Thiel, the same person, a supporter and aide of, or, and a ally of Trump, is one of Carbine's funders and a former Palantir employee named Trey Stevens is on Carbine's board of advisors. Both Prism and Palantir are considered successors to Promise. Remember Promise? One being public sector and the other private. So Peter Thiel is one of Carbine's funders and a former Palantir employee, Trey Stevens, is on their board of advisors and both Prism and Palantir are successors to Promise. The ties are overwhelming. Promise, as you remember, Patient Reported Outcomes Measurement Information System is a set of person-centered measures that evaluates them and monitors physical, mental, and social health of adults and children. That's important. That's important. Basically an all-encompassing medical surveillance network. And yeah, I'm not going to dive, I mean, we talked about this in the past. It's alarming and you should realize why that's just part of this whole agenda. It's one more part of the tech technocratic control matrix. That's what this is. But as Whitney Webb also pointed out in a previous article, Israeli intelligence, of course, has a documented history in placing backdoors into technology products for the purposes of surveillance. With one well-known case being Israel's repurposing of Promise software. Discussed in part three of Mint Press series on Jeffrey Epstein. Furthermore, given that U.S. intelligence, specifically the NSA, has had back doors placed into the products of major Silicon Valley companies, a service literally provided by Israeli intelligence linked tech companies, no less, Mossad may very well plan on doing the very same with the technology products of companies it backs through Libertad. And Libertad is essentially, as she puts it, Mossad's own in QTEL. Libertad declines to reveal, that's right here, according to Libertad's website, in return for its investment, now set at uh, $2 million, about $580,000 per year, the Mossad will receive access to the IP development during R&D while under contract and non-commercial, non-exclusive license to use it. The point is that Promise is just yet another example, and this, this is the, the very thing we're talking about, an all-encompassing surveillance medical network that is essentially that is that is tied back to Israeli intelligence. It is an all this is a full circle complete obvious thing we're looking at here. All the way around. Northern Command is now calling on Palantir and Apple and others to bring new tech to the coronavirus fight. <clears throat> As it says, the technology resent, uh, pre represents a completely new way for military personnel in the field to provide information directly to the top, O'Shaughnessy says. And the process is putting new command and control into practice. The companies working with Northcom on the project include Palantir and Isri and the help from Apple. Remember, <clears throat> Apple just did their update and so did the Android as I understand it. Someone actually just reached out to me and said, guess what? My phone just told me that the app is updating tomorrow, whether you like it or not that the phone is going to be updating tomorrow. So apparently they just superseded your choice to update your phone, as I'm, be as I'm being told. I haven't confirmed that yet. But I don't find that to be surprising at all. The reality is this is the point of this. If we're talking about an app that's categorizing your information and then giving it to them so they can make choices, let's not pretend like they won't be able to... Like, look, if that doesn't then lead back to you, how in the world are they going to enforce anything? So let's not pretend like they're not going to know where you are, who you are, who you have contact with. So when they try to pretend like it's not going to go back to anybody, no data sets include identifiable... I mean, why would they not... How To not include identifiable patients would make all of this moot. And they know that. That's why it's a lie. That's why it's a deception. They want you to feel like it's not happening as they force everything in. As another Israeli intelligence-tied group is essentially creating a surveillance network of medical surveillance in our country being backed by all the same people. By the Peter Thiels. By Donald Trump's. I mean, there you go. There's your tie again. Full circle. And of course, on top of that, the payoff, or excuse me, as she says, the PayPal offshoot becomes a weapon in the war against whistleblowers and WikiLeaks. So on top of that, Palantir, the group that they're now saying that they're 
giving their data to is literally a group that is in the war against whistleblowers. So now they're taking your data under the guise of coronavirus and probably using that to fight you if you're people just like me. If you're people that are actually speaking the truth, people that are actually speaking out against things they disagree with, who are challenging the narrative. But I'm sure that'll happen after coronavirus, right? They'll just use that later. They'll swing back around and just remove us all because that's what they do. And it's not just here. International proposals for warrantless location surveillance, of course, to fight COVID-19, right? Because that totally makes sense. Time and again, it says, governments have used crises to expand their power and often their intrusion into citizens' lives. The COVID-19 pandemic has seen this pattern play out on a huge scale. From deploying drones or ankle monitors to enforce quarantine orders to proposals to use facial recognition or thermal imaging cameras for monitoring public spaces, governments around the world have been adopting intrusive measures to their, que to their quest to contain the pandemic, or so they argue. Of course, they could care less about places like El Salvador, when, but they'll point at everything they can about Iran. Even if, it's, even if it's things they just make up, right? Even if it's things that they say are happening and they can't prove, right? Meanwhile, El Salvador is apparently completely cracking down, like literally rewriting the entire country and no one seems to care. It's obvious that they have agendas. Obvious they only care about people they want to attack. Now, the EFF, which is the Electronic, uh, Electronic Frontier Foundation, has fought for years against the often secretive governmental use of cell phone le location data. Governments have repeatedly sought to obtain this data without a court order. Again, realize how clear this is. That this is what they've always been trying to get. And now they just get to take it because virus. Are we going to pretend like always that that's just going to go away once this goes away? Just like the Patriot Act didn't, right? It says they dodged oversight of how they used and accessed it, misleadingly downplayed its sensitivity. Let me read that full sentence because it's important. It says, governments have repeatedly sought to obtain this data without a court order, dodged oversight of how they used it and accessed it, meaning they broke the law, didn't care, misleadingly downplayed its sensitivity, meaning it was very big deal and they pretended it wasn't, and forced mobile operations to retain it. Operator, excuse me. So basically making them keep it even if they know they're violating your privacy rules. In the past, these uses were most often justified with arguments of law enforcement or national security necessity. Now, remember, that was the Patriot Act. That became what it was, or at least the legal justification, because they argued terrorists were coming after us. And they turned around and pointed it at you. Guys, that's what happened. That's the truth of our own history in this country. They used it against you. But let's let them do it again, right? Now, some of the same location surveillance powers are being demanded or sometimes simply seized without making a, a, a significant contribution to contain COVID-19. That's very important. Now, you could argue simply that it's not a significant contribution, which should matter, right? That you're basically ignoring or, or violating our inherent shall not be infringed constitutional rights for something that's not even making a significant contribution, or you could argue that it's not doing anything at all and really doing something counterintuitive to what actually is happening, in fact, making things worse. Either way, they're not even caring and they're simply seasoning and it shouldn't even be something that's possible. There is no caveat to your constitutional rights, period. Despite the lack of evidence to show the effectiveness of location data to stop the spread of the virus, a number of countries, governments, have used this crisis to introduce completely new surveillance powers or extend old ones to new COVID-related purposes. Gee, it's almost like all the governments are taking advantage of the deception. For example, data retention laws compel telecom companies to continuously collect and store metadata of a whole population for a certain period of time. Europe, in Europe, the Court of Justice of European Union declared such mandates illegal under EU law. But it's happening. Now it goes on to list all the countries that are, you know, the worst in what in the, in the survey. It says attempts at rapid expansions of government location surveillance authority have come to light in seven countries. Guess who's first? Oops, I just hit a link. Israel. Big surprise, right? Even though all of our government's saying they're the best, they're doing great, everyone's doing great over there. Nope, they're, as Robert Cadillac, or excuse, uh, Robert Cadillac, Robert Inlakesh said on the interview with us, they're one of the worst right now. And he's right. South Africa, Poland, Slovakia, Croatia. I mean, it's interesting that the United States is not here, but of course they're not. But this is what's happening, whether you like it or not, whether you agree with it or not, whether you believe what's happening or not. And remember, again, this has always been happening. 
This is from Kit Knightley at Off Guardian, which has been doing a really great job, by the way, on this whole coverage. EU planning vaccination passport since 2018. It's been there. It's not, I mean, remember, right? We say right now that they're trying to make some kind of digital vaccine ID and people laugh at you. Oh, you're such a conspiracy theorist. Guys, it's literally been something they've been planning. I mean, that's what's so crazy. The people that call all those conspiracy theorists, in my opinion, are some of the most lost people in the world today. Not to say that everyone who says something is always correct if you think it's a conspiracy theory, but the fact that you're willing to just completely dismiss something offhand without actually considering it makes you ignorant. Period. Even if they're wrong, it still makes you ignorant. This has been planned. So if you're right now laughing, saying we're crazy, then you're completely lost. Because they've been planning a vaccine passport. Some, and this is just justifying it now. And I think we need to realize that a lot of things are being exposed for what they've always been. And they don't even try to hide it. Now, again, this is something that I saw today. <laughs> By all intents and purposes, this is a legitimate website. It does seem kind of simplistic. UNNWO.org. But as far as I can tell, it's legitimate. I'm just, I'm just completely shocked that we would see this a new world order right there. Now, again, that's not that crazy because we've pointed out how presidents and people in official positions have been saying this for, for 20, 30 years. They've been saying new world order. Reagan, they've been talking about, they've been saying, talking about this ever since, I mean, I, for a long time. And yet people act like it's such an outlandish theory, and that's the point. Now, that's not even to say the theory, they don't even know what your theory is. You just say the words new world order and people laugh at you, they sneer at you. Because that's and that should show you that there's probably something there. Because as they're literally saying the term, and yet you get laughed at, there's a obvious social engineering taking place there. This website is literally from the UN. Let's take our planet back. Well, let's take our planet back indeed. I completely agree with that, just from a different point from the UN. The point is that this is something that's always been there. The whole sustainable goals, the, the, the agenda 2020, agenda 2030, this is the same kind of thing. Now, I'm not arguing that every single thing within all of that is as nefarious as everyone tries to make it out to be. I do think that all of that is a pretty dangerous thing. I just don't think it's as nefarious as some people try to make it out to be in some cases. In other cases, I, in fact, think it's far worse, but that's neither here nor there. The point is this is about the new world order, the very thing they're building now. Whether you believe what that term means or whatever, their point, they're showing you it's in your face. And if you think this is fake or something not real or it can't be true, remember that it's always been there, guys. This is from the spring of 1991. Foreign Affairs, the UN, and a new world order. The plan has always been coming. It's just about how they can make it happen, how they can implement it without losing everything. And it's happening right in front of you as we speak. All of this stuff, all the connections, Everything we saw today, everything we've seen on this channel, every time, ever since you've been watching this show, all of this stuff is leading to now. And it's all being pulled out from under you as we speak. The rug is being pulled. We just, I guess, just need enough people standing on it. <laughs> we need to stop this from happening. And if we are not willing to put ourselves at risk to make this stop, then I guess we don't care about our freedom enough. Now, let me be very clear that I'm not talking about violence. I've never advocated for violence. I think violence begets more violence. I think we need something new. I think we need to evolve the way we change. But that does not mean that you don't have the right to be violent in response to violence. If somebody is infringing on your personal freedoms, if somebody is hurting people you love, then you are obligated, in my opinion, to stand up for that. Even as somebody from a libertarian standpoint, the reality is that you have the right to defend yourself. So what we need to do is stand up. Put yourself in harm's way to fight for what we believe in. And if they are violent, then we have the right to stand our ground. The truth is that things are changing rapidly, guys, and we're in a dangerous position. And all we can do is stand up for what we believe in. I mean, what else do we really have? If you're willing to stand back and say, well, that's scary, or this is something that I've never seen before, or they tell us this is what we need and they know what's best for us, and you're willing to allow those things you believe in to slip away, you're losing. That's not the right path. I don't care what they told you to make you think it was the right path. You need to stand up for what you believe in. There's, there's never been a more appropriate time to do so. Thank you so much for tuning in today, guys. And I really hope some of this got to some people that might not have been there before. It's time. 
I hope you will support your independent media, whether that's this channel or anybody else out there. Because again, as I've been saying for the last year or more, has never been a more important time. And clearly I'm right. Support your independent media. Stand up for people you believe in. And if you want to do so on this channel, I wanted to make sure you guys knew before I leave today that we do have some new stuff here. Some interesting new question everything baseball tees, which are pretty cool actually. But as well, this is an independent channel. This is Nathan from Nathan Lift the Veil who's running uh, truthclothing.io, right? Completely from his own garage, right? I don't know, plenty of you may hate and disagree with him. Probably, most of you probably hate and disagree with me too. The point is that supporting your independent media is the point. And this is legitimate. And it's about supporting the people you believe in and supporting the people through means which do not then support people like Google or YouTube or the Department of Defense or Health and Human Services or however any other ways these things go back. I love you guys. I really do. Thank you for being here. As always, question everything. Come to your own conclusions. Stay vigilant. <laughs> بش الشركات الرأسمالية تحصل أموال الأمصال ما لا تباع الدواء لا يباع إذا كان فيه تباع بثمن غالي معناها تجارة اعلنوا قولوا الدواء مجاني الأمصال المجانية مش حتنتشر الفيروسات لأن اللي خلقوا فيها بش يعملوا أمصال وبش تكسب منها الشركات الرأسمالية المصانع تشتغل بعد المخابرات